Welcome back to the channel guys. Today I have for you all a shard pull video. Honestly, I did not expect to be doing a shard pull video today. I honestly had a different video planned. However, I was going to do some live arena battles and I was doing those live arena battles and the champion I was going to showcase, I don't think I built them correctly. So we had some losses, some victories, some losses. So I want to do a little more testing before sharing that with you all because a champion is a free champion and I don't want to put out wrong information. I don't want you guys to think she's either really good or even worse, really bad and just completely ignore her. So I do want to give a fair shake to that champion. So today I've been, I've been debating this. I've been contemplating, do I actually want to go for Yumiko or do I not? So Yumiko is going to be a massive, well, one of the biggest game changing champions for my account because she's going to open up a little bit easier Doom Tower teams, which is going to be great. She's also going to open up the ability to finally bring in a lockout champion for live arena because currently all I have is Basher. I have Basher for my main lockout champion. However, if you guys watched the recent video with Elgaius, he actually did a lot better than I expected and does very similar, well, not similar stuff at all. He uh, he does set the enemy's abilities on cooldown, and which is great, but he only does it to one champion, which is not really all that bad because most time you don't need to lock out everybody. Yeah, of course, having a Warlord, that is amazing. But if you can lock out that one key component of the enemy's team, that really could be all you need. Now, the reason why I was debating on doing this mostly, okay? So Yumiko, amazing champion, I would love to get her. It's not gonna be great if I'm not close to Mercy. However, I think I may be kind of close to Mercy. The reason why I say I think is because RSL Helper currently has me at 35 shards with no legendary. That seems very far from Mercy. But since I do record most of my void shard pulls, I did go ahead and look back on my channel. When was the last time I pulled a void legendary champion? Looking back on that, I saw that back in December, which is over six months ago, I pulled Georgian. So since then, I've pulled, I know, at least 30 to 40 more shards. And this recent RSL Helper update did not take my previous Mercy and move it over. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, no. That's not Yuiko. That is Ursuga Warcaller. But it is a legendary. So now I, I know I'm close to Mercy. I'm, I'm definitely not back in Mercy. So now we are fresh. At least I know where I stand, right? At least I know where I stand. Well, dang, now I'm like, do I do I go for the legendary? Do I continue for it? Or do I just stop it here? Stop while I'm, uh, am I ahead? I'm not ahead. No, you usually stop while you're ahead, but I'm not even ahead. So we're just neutral. I think we pull 30. Now, the reason why I'm really debating this is because I've cut back my spinning significantly. My spinning before was getting a little bit crazy. So I've dropped that back a ton. So I gotta be a lot more careful with my shard pulls. However, Yumiko is one of the very few champions that would be a game changer for me. During a 10X, Voids, it's actually a decent time to pull her. So we did get some gold, but man, Ursuga, I'll look at her. Honestly, maybe I use her in some live arena. Maybe we do a live arena video with Ursuga. Would you guys like to see that? Would you like to see a live arena video with Ursuga Warcaller? She's, she's actually pretty good. She's very, very tanky. Very, very annoying to deal with. But I already got one of her. We had 10 more shards. We're in too deep. Might as well pull them. Maybe, just maybe, we can make something happen with these final 10 shards. That would be crazy. But hey, we did get a Lego, though. I mean, I'm happy with that. I'm just going to say that. I'm just going to cope. I'm just going to cope with that. All right, here we go. Come on. Come on. Give me some gold. Give me some... Oh, no gold. All right, well, we did get a Legendary Champion, which, hey, from 50 shards, not even, that's not bad. Um, we are currently 31 with no legendary. My previous legendary was Ursuga Warcaller on 44th shard. Well, according to this, which if nothing else, I am happy to now know finally, hey, I'm kind of close to Mercy. Assuming I was. I really don't know where I was, but I would rather use my Mercy on a 10x Yumiko than anything else. 10x Warlord would be very, very close. I'm not for sure who I'd, ra I'd value more. Yumiko would fit into more teams, but Warlord would be that much better for the arena. So, hey, we got a legendary, got my mercy system, so now I can actually track it, which is very good. So no complaints there. However, I want to talk about this soul. Actually, I don't want to talk about it. I'm saving soul stones. I'm saving soul stones for the event. So honestly, there's nothing to talk about there. We're just going to completely pass that, guys. Also, don't forget to drop a like on the channel. Drop a like, subscribe to the channel, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you pulled it. Did you pull for Yumiko? Did you get anything good? If so, I want to talk about Ursuga. So Ursuga, I actually do have one built, and I'll show you guys in a second. Well, now I have two of her, so that is what it is, right? But her A1 has a chance of placing block active skills, which is actually is a very good debuff. However, 
It's not a very popularly used thing to build her with accuracy because there's so much polymorph and you don't want her landing polymorph. However, she does have some more very useful debuffs on her A2. And a matter of fact, uh, I may actually build her for some accuracy, stack some resistance. So when the polymorph change actually goes through, she could be that much better. She wouldn't be able to get debuffed because she has a resistance. She could have enough accuracy to place her debuffs and wouldn't have to worry about getting polymorph all the time. That may actually be really good. So I may actually do that. Put her like, you know, 200-ish accuracy, maybe 300 accuracy, and then put her resistance to like 500 or something. That could be decent. So then those enemies running polymorph who now have to have accuracy to actually place their polymorph will most likely not place it on her because they're probably not going to be running like, you know, three, 400 plus accuracy on a champion like Duchess or a champion like Pythion if they're even running polymorph at all. So that could be really good. I do like that. And she has great debuffs anyways. Decreased crit damage is conditional, I believe. So decreased crit damage and decreased attack on targets whose attack is higher than their defense. And then decreased speed and decreased defense on targets whose attack is equal to or lower than their defense. So attack-based nukers decreases their damage basically in general. And then defensive and more tanky champions decreases their speed and their defense. So makes them squishier and slower. Very good. And then our A3 places ally protection on all champions except for this champion of course for three turns so it's a pretty long duration so if you have the buff the uh, mastery to extend the duration it's going to be a four turn chance and then places a strengthen on all on this champion for three turns okay so the strengthen is not on everybody just on this champion which is perfectly fine she needs to uh, she needs to be even more tanky and then her passive this is where really all the focus gets put to decreases the damage all allies receive from critical hits by 30 percent this champion will receive that damage instead so she may be a very viable option for Polymorph, I think. Like to have the Polymorph Blessing on her because of her need for accuracy and the likelihood that she's going to be attempted to be stripped, attempted to be placed block passive. So, hey, that may actually be a pretty solid Polymorph option and a good answer for people running Polymorph, honestly. But we'll see. I do need to work on her some more. She has a big, long lore story. Sweet. And she has a big HP aura as well. Um, now, as far as how mine's currently built, she's not built to be, like, super used. I don't use her a ton, but I do use her some. So, she's in Defiant plus Bolster. Bolster, she has a massive HP pool, guys. This champion has crazy base stats. She has 23,000 HP, 1,500 base defense, okay? Just to compare that real quick, Val Valkyrie has 1,597 base defense, and she has crazy base defense. Ursuga has 1,500 defense as well as 23,000 attack. So she is just an absolute tank of a champion. She has really good speed too. So matter of fact, I may actually boost her speed some because I don't mind her taking turns. I mean, she'd break the reaction stuff, but her getting more turns would allow her to actually, you know, I'm actually gonna book her. I'm gonna fully book this copy of Ursuga. Let's go ahead and do this. Um, the other one's gonna go in the vault, of course. I'm not gonna use that one. I don't think I have any reason to use two Ursugas, but I will go ahead and book her. So I do think she's a, good enough champion to make some pretty viable and legit builds with and some solid pushes in the arena i didn't even realize that i did jet fusion but sweet now we got two more champions to add to the vault three actually three legendaries to the vault let's throw some of these five star champions into the actually these need to go into the master vault i'm getting ready for a uh, champion training tournament down the road so we got a lot of five star champs so apothecary is going in there some more champs here are going to be going in there. we got some four stars ready to level up. So, guys, I am ready for when that event comes. Let's go ahead and throw these champions in there as well. They don't have any gear. so no reason to uh, keep them anywhere else. 265, all food champions, baby. All food champions. If you guys see anything you want to see me build, let me know. Especially when the time the uh, champion training tournament with a champion reward comes, I will have so many new champions. It may actually be one of the last times I push in those events because... My vaults are getting full. Like, I have so many five-star champions, it's getting crazy. I'm going to have to start feeding six-star champions. Like, that's what it's going to come down to. But I'm ready. I'm ready for it. So, guys, thank you all very much for watching the video. Hopefully, you enjoyed. Hopefully, your pulls went amazing. Maybe you got a Yumiko. Man, if I would have got a Yumiko, I probably would have instantly maxed her. Instantly maxed her at CVC. Now is the perfect time to pull those game changers. But, uh, yeah, we got Ursuga. So, hey, we're going to use her. Oh, well, I'm not going to use her, but I will do some content on her does work out for the guardian ring very nice there i guess now we're eight out of ten getting closer and closer to filling that out i do need some more copies of your carl but as far as other barbarians who would i um the legendary barbarians there's, there's some good ones cantra's huge valkyrie's huge 
So I boosted my resistance and accuracy, right? Yeah, uh, plus ten plus ten percent defense. Okay, so uh, it is what it is. You you get some great pulls, you get some mediocre pulls. She'd be a great pull if she's my first copy. But she's my second copy, so no use for her. But Faction Guardians is always nice. So guys, thank you again for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed, and I'll catch you all in the next one.